Hey everybody, welcome back to the Frugal Filmmaker Q&A. If I tested this microphone, no I haven't, okay. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Frugal Filmmaker Q&A. That's the show where you ask me a filmmaking question and I try to answer it without looking stupid. If you'd like your question read right on the show, please send me an email to thefrugalfilmmaker at gmail.com. That's your best chance you have of getting your question read right on the show. Or you can comment below, or you can send me a message on Twitter at Frugal Filmmaker. My video last week was another part in the series I'm doing about making a short frugal film, and this one was about the definition of what a frugal short film is, in my opinion. So if you're interested in short filmmaking, or you want to make your own short, you might want to take a look at that video. Okay, our first question comes from email, and it's from Alex Reyes, who says, Hey Scott, I was wondering if there was any way to better enhance the quality of my audio when using the Zoom H1 recorder. I'm also thinking about investing in the Rode video mic with Rycoat liar suspension system do you think it's a good buy or should i take a look at some other microphones well if you don't know already i also use the zoom h1 handy recorder and i like it a lot as far as improving the sound of course there's nothing you can do to the digital recorder itself but it all depends on the microphone going into it and perhaps the cable now i'm just using an unbalanced lav mic right now but if you want to get fancy you can always use an xlr microphone to get the proper adapter going into the zoom h1 or going through some kind of audio interface and it will definitely improve your sound. So I guess it's up to you to determine what's the better microphone you want to plug into the Zoom H1 to get better sound. And I guess another question is, how much do you want to spend? Now I personally, I do have the Rode video mic, which I've done a video on before, actually comparing all the microphones that I own to so you can get an idea about how they sound together. I really like my uh, Sennheiser ME66. It's the most expensive microphone that I own, and as a result, it's the best sounding one. I use it on all my short films and shoots where I need a shotgun microphone. It's really great, and I go through an audio interface to get to the Zoom H1. So I think it sounds pretty good. That's also featured in that video that I just mentioned. Although remember, it's not just the microphone, it's also the position the microphone is in in relation to the person speaking. Get it as close as you can to their mouth, and you'll get better audio. The old adage says, even the most expensive microphone in the wrong position will sound terrible, where a lesser microphone in the right position will sound better. And you mentioned, of course, the suspension system. Very, very important. I think the Lyre suspension system, or that type of suspension system, which comes all from below, instead of surrounding the microphone, is a really well-designed system. If you can afford it, definitely get one of those. Also very important, don't forget some kind of windscreen to help resist that wind noise, which is terrible outside. If the wind's even blowing a little bit, all these really good microphones will pick up that wind and it sounds awful. It will ruin your sound. So be sure that you look into getting one of those as well. Very, very important because you will go outside sometime to shoot. I know you will, and that is critical, along with the quality of microphone, the position of the microphone, and of course the cable. Don't forget that. If you have a bad cable, that can ruin your sound as well. Next up, we have Mahish Babu. Hope I said that right. He says, Hello from India. Hello, India. I have been trying to record the close like sound in the movies for my short film, like the sound of clothes brushing up against each other but it's coming really hard for me as it's out of sync. Is there any advice to record slash sync it easily at home? Well, it looks like we're talking about Foley here, and Foley is where you actually watch the movie while you're creating the sound effects live as they're being recorded, so you can match them up as best as possible. And I don't know if you have a kind of setup to do that. I just get my laptop and I open it up and I play the video on my laptop, and then I have a separate recorder, the Zoom H1, and I just record the sounds that way. I actually did this in the past, and if you watch this scene right here, you tell me if it's foley or not. Now what happened here, since I wasn't recording any dialogues, I didn't have a boom mic or a separate mic of any kind, so I was just relying on the on-camera audio, just to get a scratch track or ambient noise, which, which happened to be the sheets moving on the bed. But it didn't get recorded for some reason, so I had nothing. So what I had to do was actually play the video. I think I did it at the time on a TV, and then I just had my video camera I was using at the time as a recorder, just something quick and easy. And I took a blanket or a comforter or something that looked similar, and I just rubbed it together, rubbed it in different directions as I was watching the video on screen, so I tried to match it as best as possible. And yes, it did take me a few takes to get it right, but I did get it right close enough to what you see in the video, which I think matches pretty well. Now you'll probably need to employ some kind of synchronization trick so you know where to put your foliage sound in post, since all you're gonna end up with is an audio recording with no visuals. So what I would suggest is maybe talk, explain what's happening on screen uh, before you actually do your foley, so that way you'll know kind of where it is in the video, and then when you, once you get it into your editor, you can then slide the video and the audio back and forth and then line them up that way. That might be a way to do it. But it shouldn't be too hard to figure out. You should be able to come up with something pretty easy to let you achieve that. Foley can be really awesome. It's a really effective post-production audio tool, and I highly recommend it. Good luck. Ray Barber says, I film a lot of school productions where it would be good to get higher up. A scaffold tower would be ideal, but the logistics of setting it up are against it. I've thought about sitting on top of a stepladder, but how do I support the camera? Have you any ideas, please? 
And when I first read your question, Ray, I thought about, oh, he needs something like the frugal crane or some kind of crane that would let him get high in the air as well as giving him some kind of control. But usually cranes just have some kind of tilting control and you have to spend a lot of money to get panning and tilting controls. Now, if that's an option, you might want to look into that because the frugal crane is not that hard to build. However, if you want something that's a little more straight up in the air because you don't have room to move a crane around, you might want to think about just getting a tall pole and putting some kind of motorized pan and tilt mechanism on it that you control remotely. And I found one that was only $50, but it only handles cameras that are about half a pound, mainly the GoPro and smartphone cameras. But you can control them with a wired remote, which is pretty good. Uh, I also found one that was $130 that handled cameras up to six pounds, but it had a wired remote. So I don't exactly know how high you could raise up with it, but it's definitely made for larger cameras, which it sounds like you might have. I got these ideas basically from what are called end zone cameras or cameras that are used for sporting events where they put the cameras actually in the end zone and they're way up like 25 feet up in the air on the end of a pole and they're controlled remotely. It's a very similar idea, but they cost thousands of dollars. And I think this would be fairly easy to replicate in a DIY version without costing thousands of dollars like the professional versions. You just have to put all the pieces together and make sure you have that pole lashed in your camera secure. Okay, on to YouTube, we have a comment from Diane Scro who says, do you have any recommendations on a frugal solution for storing slash carrying camera light and sound equipment? I'm looking for something to protect the equipment but not break the bank. Well, Diane, I had a similar need when I moved to Alaska because I had to take all this filmmaking stuff with me that I was too afraid to mail. So I had to be able to check it on a plane. So what I did was I found these crates at Home Depot. They were pretty big and heavy duty. They actually had real handles on the side. You could wrap your entire hand around and carry them. They had locking clasps on both sides. And they were just within the parameters that I could bring them on the plane to be checked as luggage. So they were perfect. Uh, but they were also big enough to where I could put like lay down light stands inside of them and they're great for storing as well as transporting. So I would highly recommend those. They're the Husky brand if, or any plastic crate really will work for this kind of thing. And it also protects your gear from getting crushed if something falls on them, of course, something that's not too heavy. And they're not only good for transporting gear, but of course storing it. In fact, they're made to be stackable like most plastic crates. So I've got six of them stacked in this room right now. But I'm curious to hear what everyone else uses. Please comment below if you can help Diane out. Finally, we have New Channel who says, what if I have a clip that's 60 frames per second and I want it to be slow motion in the middle? Like how the slow-mo guys have the sound effect and the video smoothly slows down. I don't need the sound effect, but how do you get it to go from regular speed to slow motion to regular speed smoothly? Now this trick is actually pretty easy to replicate, but what you want to do is shoot everything at 60 frames per second, even the stuff you want to appear at normal speed. You then import all this footage into your timeline, which you've set for normal speed, which is 24 frames per second, and everything is gonna play in slow motion. Then what you wanna do is cut up your clips with your razor or split or slicing tool or whatever. So you've got your clips that you wanna be normal speed and your clips that you want to be slow motion. Take the clips that you want to be normal speed and speed them up. Remember, it's a 60 frames per second clip in a 24 frames per second timeline, so it's going to go slow unless you speed it up. Speed it up until it appears normal and then leave the clips alone that you want to be slow motion. Then when you put them together, this clip will appear normal until it hits that slow motion clip and it'll go slow. And then if it hits another clip that's been sped up, it'll play normal and slow and normal and slow, etc. And that's our show for today. I'd like to thank everyone who wrote in. Really good questions as always. And if you have a question you'd like answered and read on the show, please send me an email to thefrugalfilmmaker at gmail.com. That's your best chance you have getting it read on the show. Or you can comment below or you can send me a message on Twitter at frugalfilmmaker. We've got another video coming this week, hopefully before Saturday. <sighs> and another Q&A on Tuesday. We'll see you. Bye.